Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to make a new rolling cart for the drum sander. You might ask yourself, Tyler, why are you making a new rolling cart when you got a perfectly good one right there? And there are two reasons and we'll cover them as we move on. This project is primarily going to be built from that three quarter inch sheet of plywood right there. If you want to do the full drawer, you're going to have to get some half inch as well. But I didn't need it because I had some laying around from an old project. We're going to start by getting that guy up on the assembly table and using our new Craig track saw to break it down. And then we will do some further cutting over here on the table saw, making sure everything is nice and square. If I was doing something nicer than a piece of shop furniture, I would probably make this first cut a little bit bigger so that I can then go ahead and run this back through the table saw, making sure this factory edge is nice and square. But for a piece of shop furniture, we'll save the time. focus we're gonna cut these guys right now we got to do two and this is where a track saw is really really going to shine because i'm going to cut them directly out of this piece of wood and then we're done messing around with it so i'm going to lay that out and then we can cut right up to those lines using the track saw that is a super super tight fit on that board literally have like an eighth of an inch in one spot right here we're going to have, this is gonna be a different board on this side, and then right here is one of our angled pieces. Look at that. That's my pinky, pinky finger. So yeah, eighth of an inch or something right there. But I wanted to show you one quick trick that I used in here to make sure that I had accurate measurements, and that is to leave an inch, which I think is the term used by real carpenters. And here is a great example of what I mean by that. So right here is the top of our board, and here is a measurement that I need for where the angle is gonna start. Instead of going just like this, which would probably give me a decent measurement, I led by an inch down on this side. So instead of the 14 inches that I wanted, I'm now gonna measure to 15 inches, but this is gonna remove any slop that I have in the toe of the tape measure right here, make sure I get a consistent measurement every single time. Jigsaw's perfect for getting in those tiny little corners where the circular blade couldn't get right up against the edge. Just go slow and make sure you don't gouge out your nice straight line that you've got at this point. So we got everything cut up on the track saw and now we're gonna move back to the table saw. And the last cuts I made over here were on an angle. I was cutting some French cleats. And you always want to make sure when you go back to 90 degrees that you're actually back at 90 degrees. Don't always trust your stops because you could have some dust or a chip in there that can throw everything off on your build. So there is another shelf that goes right about here and instead of putting the other side on and then spreading these apart to try to get that shelf in, I cut a couple of spacers real quick. We're going to set them in place here and I'm going to glue and nail this side of that shelf into place. Then we'll spin it around and put the other side profile on. Should be much easier.
as we stand right now this is not quite as stable as I was hoping yes we have a couple more shelves to put in here and the glue to set up what I'm going to do right now though is take that 8 inch spacer that we just used to make the shelf right here I'm gonna cut a 45 degree angle on there I'm gonna have two different brackets that we'll put on either side of this thing and that should really help stiffen things up Much better. And we're perfectly square, although it might have been a wise thing to check that before I put all those nails in. My plan is to build from the top down at this point, just to make sure I have the proper spacing. That top layer is going to be two three quarter inch pieces of plywood laminated together. I am going to put the outer veneer of the plywood together. No particular reason, although I guess that could compensate for any bow that you might have in the plywood, making sure we get a nice flat top. going to add another shelf with some spacers in there and to lay this out evenly we're going to measure this entire thing which is 27 inches we're going to subtract a one and a half from our dual layers of plywood which gives us 25 and a half inches and then divide that into three different pockets which gives us eight and a half inch pockets I'm going to go ahead and mark that out we'll nail these in place and then we'll put it up underneath what we currently have there on the stand Right now, with only one sheet of plywood, that cart is 100% functional. Obviously, you gotta put the drum sander on there, but the cart as we need it is all ready to go. But I wanna add a drawer in the bottom there. That is not able to be done with the one sheet of plywood, but really, really close. So I'm gonna use this scrap of half inch plywood that I've had here for a long time to finish up that drawer. Now, I already have the base out of that same three quarter inch piece of plywood. And I need to cut that a little bit shorter because if you remember right, we added those 45 degree stabilizers in the back of the cart. So I need to recut that to make sure I have the proper depth there. This has been taken care of in the plans so you guys don't have to worry about it.
you've probably noticed by now that the depth of the drawer takes into account the bolts that are sticking up from the bottom here. And there's actually quite a bit of play. I guess you could have made the drawer a little bit deeper if you want to, but it happened to work out perfectly with the scraps I had. And then really, I don't think there's any need to go all the way to the top there, because if you pile stuff up in here, it can still go up over the edge if you need it to. To give me a proper spacing over those bolts, I'm gonna use a scrap quarter inch piece of plywood and a scrap quarter inch piece of hardboard. And that should give us proper elevation for those bolts. Well, check that bad boy out right there. Came out fantastic. Very happy with the accuracy of all the measurements and the plans for this build. You can check them out, link in the description below if you wanna build something like this for yourself. Just like I was hoping, the in-feed and out-feed tables are within the 20 and a half inches of the stand, so it will tuck up against the wall better than it did previously. And look at all that space underneath the sander that we gained. Hope you guys enjoyed this build, and if you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. I'm Diama Tyler, and you guys have a good one.